I have to admit, I uh, was a little. Dis I had a disturbing event yesterday. Uh, I met uh, our cameraman. I don't know if you've met Will Scriver yet, uh, and he he kept telling me he he thought he had seen me somewhere. And uh, finally, right around lunchtime, he came up and he said, I finally figured out where I've seen you. I said, well, where's that? And he said, you look like Mark Hoffman. <laughs> I, th I, I would rather be Dan Peterson with the Krispy Kremes than Mark Hoffman. <laughs> You know, I have to tell you one more little thing here. Uh, you know, I, I've been kind of messing around a little bit on the uh, fair boards, and uh, we keep getting this uh, this elephant in the room thing. Some of you know what, what I'm talking about. You know, the Book of Abraham controversy, the elephant in the room is, it's so obvious that why doesn't everybody just see that and, and leave the church? And uh, uh, it reminded me of this, uh, this cartoon thing that I, I saw one time. Uh, it was uh, two fleas on a cocker spaniel, I believe it was, uh, looking up into the stars. And one flea says to the other, do you really believe in a dog? <laughs> it's just that obvious, isn't it? Things are just that obvious. Well, it's a pleasure to be with you today. It's, uh, it's been, you know, I, I, th I think this is my first fair conference, I believe. And uh, I've, I've watched your work. I've been a, a, an admirer from afar. And so I'm kind of glad that I finally broke the ice and got, got to know you a little bit more. And, and I'm, I'm with you now. I hope that I can be counted among you as, uh, as we move along here. Uh, for many years, I've had a, a, a really deep interest in the Book of Abraham. I've, I've researched it, I've written about it, as you know. And uh, the main thing that I, that I guess I want to start out with, with the Book of Abraham, is I'm totally biased that it's the Word of God. Totally biased. Okay, I believe it with all my heart that this is the Word of God. Okay, now that, if that uh, offends anybody, uh, good. Because uh, that's the way it is. Because that, it's the Holy Spirit that's told, told me that it's true. So everything that I tell you today, whether it's all this evidence and all this technical stuff, okay, really doesn't convince me one way or the other. Because if it's, if it's uh, what the critics say, I still believe the book of Abraham is true. That, that's not ever going to change, okay, because, because I've had that witness. And I think I, think I have some people out here that, that feel that too. I know I do. Uh, that it doesn't matter what they say, we still know it's true. Uh, all the way. Now, if, if keeping my solemn covenant, and I say solemn covenant, to sustain and defend the kingdom of God upon this earth makes me an apologist, so be it. <laughs> then you can call me an apologist all day long, because I'm going to keep that covenant. Well, the KEP, Kirtland Egyptian Papers. It's not uncommon in academics, in my field anyway, to, to uh, run against uh, questions, problems uh, that, ha that have tough solutions to them, or not even solutions. You run into conundrums and paradoxes all the time. And with the KAP, it's around every turn. Every turn that you go, there's just a question looming there. This question mark for this, question mark for that. And you just, you're about pulling your hair out, trying to figure things out. And so, for the past couple of years, I have devoted my life to try to figure out the Kirtland Egyptian papers, and I'm happy to tell you that I've got it all figured out now, okay? So I'm going to give you the word today, all right? All right. What did I have to do to, to learn about the KAP? Well, I, I did have to kind of figure out, since uh, I'm an Islamicist and I can't be an expert in this, uh, I, I, I decided that uh, I would uh, draw on some other people like Royal Skousen, okay, or uh, uh, Kent Jackson. People have done some textual studies, and I've actually learned some things along the way. So I've gotten out of my Islamic 
barrier there, and I've learned new things. Isn't that amazing that we can do that? We don't have to be, I mean, Kevin Barney's sitting right here. He's a lawyer, plus he's a great scholar, okay? <laughs> And, and I, I think those two are mutually exclusive sometimes, but uh, I'm just kidding, Kevin. All right. So I've, I've spent a lot of time trying to figure out what I need to know in order to evaluate these documents. And so I'm not going to be able to give you all of the answers. Uh, I'm not going to be able to talk about all of the Abraham and Egyptian manuscripts, but I am going to give it a try at least to give you some things to think about here. Now you know that they're called the Kirtland Egyptian Papers. And uh, as I've worked with uh, with some of the church historians, as I've had an opportunity to uh, look at the originals, uh, they just have them, they basically have them cataloged, okay? And so, so they made me memorize these numbers here, okay? And they said, what you go by is those numbers there. Okay, manuscript 1294, folders one through five. I said, okay. And then on the Egyptian stuff, manuscript 1295, folders one through nine. Okay, and uh, it's really interesting because they, they keep them in a box. Okay, and the top flips up. Okay, and then you got all these folders in there. And then they're marked just like what it says here. Okay, and you just open it up and there's all your folders and they, they try to keep it between this nice plastic sheets, of course, uh, to, to stop uh, any deterioration, I suppose. Uh, I suppose they'll do some uh, conservation in the future to uh, uh, seal them in mylar like they did with uh, the papyri, uh, which is all nicely taken care of at this time. So, what I would like to do is to help uh, all of us uh, look at these papers a little bit differently. First of all, they're not really Kirtland Egyptian papers because not all of them are from Kirtland, okay? And so I'm going to refer to them as either Abraham manuscripts or Egyptian manuscripts, okay? Now the Abraham manuscripts are the ones that have the Book of Abraham text on them. Okay, and the Egyptian manuscripts are different. They have the alphabet in there, and they have the counting in there, and they have the grammar book. And so when I refer to that, to those, that's what I'm trying to say there. But I want to give you a little background of these manuscripts first before we can talk about them because I would assume that not everybody here knows all these manuscripts. Okay, and so let me see if I can... All right, I know that's a big chart here. Uh, there's something like this on Fair Wiki, okay? Something like this. This is just for the Book of Abraham manuscripts, uh, and I'll show you the Egyptian one in a minute here. But Book of Abraham manuscript number one at the top. Oh, yeah, that's right, I got a pointer here. Right here, okay, going across. Uh, it's dated sometime in 1835. It has five leaves. That means there's writing on both sides, okay? And so there's 10 pages to it, and the first part of it on page one, and that would be Abraham 1, 1 through 3, okay, is in the hand of W.W. Of w. Phelps, okay, and then the, the next part and all the way to the end of the manuscript is in the hand of Warren Parrish, and, and Warren's a very, very nice writer, okay, easy to, pretty easy to read, okay, so that's manuscript number one. Now, this one here was discovered by Wilford Wood, Wilford Wood. Now, Wilford Wood uh, lived around the turn of the century. I think he died in 50-something or 60-something. And he was a furrier. He, liked, he made fur coats. And uh, when, I think it was in 1916, he kind of had a, a spiritual calling to spend his life trying to find everything that he could, all the artifacts that he could, papers, documents, things that belonged to Joseph Smith. Okay, and he tried to collect as much as he could. And uh, in 1935, 36, I think 36, 37 especially, he's in touch with a man named Charles Biteman. Now, Charles Biteman is the son of Lewis Biteman, who's the second husband of Emma Smith. Okay, and that's where that manuscript comes from. He bought it from, Wilford Wood bought it from him for $100 and a fur coat for Charles's wife. 
okay? That's how we got that manuscript, all right? That was in 1937. And then that, then uh, Brother uh, Wood was very uh, c concerned that that manuscript be preserved and given to the church, so he, he donated it to the church, and it's been with the uh, church historical department ever since. Now, manuscript number two. Okay, that's only, that's another 1835 document, I think. Uh, it's two leaves, that means it's two sheets of paper written on both sides. Okay, it's in the hand of Frederick G. Williams. Okay, now, uh, Joseph, or I'm, 